time as the state constructs two new prisons near Greaterford in Montgomery County. Do you support reducing the state's prison population? If so, what concrete steps would you take to do so? Also, do you support legalizing marijuana? Uh, let's start with Congressman Schwartz. I know, we miss John Hanger, huh? <laughs> so, uh, let me say this, John was right, uh, that, uh, at least in part, that, that in fact we are seeing incarceration from simple possession of marijuana, and that is uh, unnecessary, it, it clogs our criminal justice system, and we should end that. Um, and I support that, and we should also support medical marijuana, not quite the, the question right now, but I thank John for raising those issues and, and bringing them to the fore. Uh, let me say this, the, the cost of incarceration uh, is a major issue for the state. Uh, what we need to do is to make sure that we have uh, smart policies, not ones to just trigger incarceration. Um, and, what that, and what I mean by that, and I was there during Governor Bridges' time when we actually, when he, I pushed back on this, I don't mean, remember Jack's position on this or not, but, uh, but in fact in, in making sure that we have to reverse some of what he did, particularly for juveniles. First offenders, uh, nonviolent crimes, uh, we have got to make sure that we reverse that trend of putting them in jail, hurting their, their opportunities for a lifetime. Uh, we have to do more to make sure that, uh, that people who are ex-offenders, who are leaving incarceration, actually have the skills and the ability to get a job. Otherwise, what else do they do but turn to, uh, to another crime? We know that recidivism is huge in the state. Uh, we need to do a much better job of post-incarceration uh, and helping them to succeed. So we need to punish those who need to be punished. We need to keep those in jail and we're going to be seriously dangerous to, uh, to the rest of us. But we've got to be a lot smarter about this and a lot fairer. Uh, and a lot less biased. Thank you. Auditor General. Uh, Forty percent of, of those incarcerated in state prisons today are nonviolent offenders, the majority of which are there for drug offenses. Do we need to decriminalize uh, the use of drugs and not pe put people in state prisons? You're darn right we, we do. But there's a way to address it. And, and I'm not going to sit here and say, these are not serious offenses if you're selling heroin and cocaine. And believe me, it's going on everywhere in Pennsylvania. It's, it's a disease. Uh, and it's touched every family, including mine. And, and we need to get a handle on it. But it's not putting people in with hard criminals who are selling marijuana. It's really putting them on probation and parole and giving them an ankle bracelet and, and making them attend proper uh, sessions to address their problem. So yes, we need to decriminalize many of these nonviolent offenses and get people out of prison. The cost of incarceration is $35,000 a year. An ankle bracelet is $3,000 a year. What makes more sense and what's better for the individual? I'm for the legalization of marijuana for medical purposes only with very tight controls and it being properly taxed. <laughs> Marijuana is an entry-level drug. And believe me, uh, when the, the drug problem in our Commonwealth today is ra rampant, and we need to do more to address it. Thank you. Treasurer McCord. It, well, first, we need to be very skeptical about the prison industrial complex and, and the school, the prison pipeline, and how it in particular is destroying the minority communities. Uh, one of the great points that John uh, would make, we, it's clear we miss him, is that you're five times more likely to be sentenced if you're African American on a marijuana offense versus a white person for the same use of uh, I, I clearly would want to attack that, that prison industrial complex. I, I also am proud that I think I can attract some of the votes from what I regularly call the, the Dwight Eisenhower wing of the Democratic Party. Dwight Eisenhower was pro-integration. He, 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 he was president of an Ivy League school. He was skeptical of what? The military industrial complex. And he believed in this woolly-haired liberal idea that there was such a thing as a productive public sector investment. You need to be skeptical about the aggregations of power in the hands of the very rich. That's what's going on when Tom Corbett replaces 154% of the stimulus money to build prisons while cutting education. We will attack that. And 
I, I could return at length on marijuana, but the core point is we need to be thoughtful about this. Don't just chase the latest polls. Uh, a couple of core points. Patrick Kennedy talks about the danger of sort of normalizing marijuana consumption, as Jack was referring to. On the other hand, if we're going to go there, we need to examine the evidence, and I think you would want to, if you go there, legalize it so you can both regulate it and tax it, create good jobs and revenues to invest in things the public needs. Thank you. Secretary. Uh, thank you. And just to add to some of what uh, Rob was saying, that if we need any more evidence in how toxic that uh, schools to jails uh, continuum has gotten, the situation in northeastern Pennsylvania, the cash for kids, where, kid, where people are making money, ruining the lives of, of young kids, tells us everything about sentencing can and should be up for thorough reexamination. I think we have to fully look at the, the, the issue of mandatory minimums in particular. That is driving this whole uh, cycle that we are talking about here that does nothing resembling good. And I would take that on. A uh, gentleman stopped me on the way in, and he added to the equation pardons. Uh, the pardon system is another tool that we have to look at okay. to use to see if we can give a young person their life back. Uh, I also am very proud to have uh, supported and stood with uh, Jordan Harris and others who are calling for the second chance legislation. Give young people a second chance, especially when they have shown that they will work hard and do the right thing, and I will stand with them. Uh, on marijuana, listen, it's part of that continuum where nonviolent offenses we do, we have to completely re-examine, and I would. I am for uh, the availability of marijuana for medical necessity. I've not been for, and I'm not for the full recreational legalization of marijuana. Thanks. All right, thank you. Um, a quick follow-up, uh, which begins with a plug of the current city paper, which is out there, in which I had a story describing the decline of commutations of life sentences in Pennsylvania. Governor Schaap in the 1970s commuted hundreds of life sentences. Um, that has declined precipitously in recent years. Governor Corbett has so far commuted zero. Would you take seriously your powers of um, commutation if elected governor? Uh, let's start with uh, Auditor General Weston. Well, it would depend on the offense, sure. and, and I, that's a very difficult question to generalize uh, in terms of my opinion. Uh, obviously, uh, I would not agree with it uh, with a serial killer, uh, premeditated murder, uh, uh, offenses such as that. So each, each and every one, I would be open-minded to it, uh, and a, each and every case would be its own individual case. Thank you. Treasurer? Oh, the, uh, so no, that's, so first, I think the core of the answer is we need sentencing reform. I've had a lot of uh, conversations with prosecutors. We can work with the prosecutor community to have much better sentences. What happened in the 1980s when I was a kid between college and getting my MBA at Wharton, I worked on Capitol Hill, and you saw all these guys try to prove how tough they were, saying they were tough on crime with all these tough sentences that we're now paying the price for, that are not reducing crime, that in fact are increasing crime, yep. that are costing our public budget money, yep. we need robust sentencing reform, and not just the autocratic move on the part of the governor uh, to commute sentences, but you will have in Lee Jackson, the first African American first lady, and she comes home and she sits with me and talks about going out to dinner with a woman who has two sons in, in jail on life sentences. Their lives have been thrown away, but a grandson who after one year in prison is on his way to Howard University. These are issues we care about in my family. We will address them. Thank you. Secretary McGinty. Yeah, thanks. And specifically with respect to pardons, uh, Dan, any time when there is data like you have cited and that you've done a brilliant job of bringing forward, it's incumbent upon a governor to look at that data and make sure you're acting to see why would there be such a dramatic change and yes, I would step up and take a very critical look at that and see why it is that the pardon has not been a part of this whole equation as it had, uh, had previously been. Thank you. Congresswoman. Yeah, we discussed this as well. What I can say is that there is a process for this. There's a, a, a board that looks at it, led by the lieutenant governor, and uh, in fact, I would take seriously uh, the recommendations and lean on them to make sure those appointments are people who actually would uh, not turn a blind eye to the opportunity that would help some people who deserve to be able to be 
be given a second chance to be able to get out of jail. But this is a responsibility of the governor. It's a tough one. It's not an easy decision to make, and I think it has to be taken very, very seriously. Um, but to make sure that there are people who might have that opportunity, who have shown that they can function in a, in a civil society, uh, to be able to look at that data and make a decision. Great, thank you. Uh, and now Holly is going to ask a question about natural gas and fracking. <laughs> okay. Glad you're excited. Um, Pennsylvania has become a major producer of natural gas with thousands of wells drilled and fracked around the state. Conversely, the Delaware River Basin has maintained a moratorium on hydraulic fracturing. Uh, Governor Corbett has been a staunch advocate on the Delaware River Basin Commission for allowing drilling near the Delaware. As governor, would you support maintaining a moratorium in the Delaware River Basin? And we will start off with uh, Treasurer. Yes. I should now figure out how to consume dry So the short answer is yes. And I do appreciate the feedback and I appreciate the, the civility of those who protest and say ban all fracking. Now, I think you bring up a lot of important environmental concerns and the need to engage in the quest for evidence and scientific inquiry in a McCord administration will create thousands of STEM related jobs science, technology, engineering oriented jobs for young people who will engage in monitoring what's going on with fracking. Yes, it's been done in other states, but under very different circumstances. So we will zone it more aggressively. We will repeal and replace what Tom Corbett should have known was bad law. Finally, the courts are telling him that. And we will tax it appropriately. I have the boldest approach on this generating $1.6 billion, rising to $3 billion as a piece of the funding puzzle so that we can do things like fund pensions for senior citizens and invest in higher education and have appropriate, uh, appropriate uh, public education uh, funding at every level across, across the Commonwealth. Tom Corbett was wrong when he said that basically behaving like a wholly owned subsidiary of the Marcellus Shale industry would lift the entire Pennsylvania economy. The evidence is in. It didn't work. We need to kick Tom Corbett out of office. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, and that's a good jumping off point. Uh, this, this question raises something that I have uh, been proud to dedicate my entire career to, and that is breaking down the myth that people like Tom Porter would have us believe, that if we dare try to protect our air, land, and water, it's going to cost our jobs. That is a myth. It's not true. And his performance on the environment and jobs tells the tale. We're 48th in job creation at a time when he has taken the environmental cop off the beat. We would turn every bit of that around. With respect to the Marcellus, I have laid out a very detailed plan as to where we need to have a much more forward-looking approach on clean water, reducing water consumption, reducing methane emissions from the production uh, of, uh, of Marcellus, and also making sure we've got the environmental cop on the beat. We do not need midnight dumpers in Pennsylvania, and I would make sure that we have that uh, adequate and effective enforcement. Second, on the point about solar and wind, you bet. It's something as vital as energy. We have to have a diversified energy portfolio. For our entire history as a country, we put all of our energy eggs in one basket that's fossil fuels. When I was secretary, we diversified. We were number one in wind. We were number two in solar. I would bring us back in that direction. Now, the question was asked specifically about the Delaware River Basin. When I was secretary, I also had the privilege of coming to know that some of the most sensitive streams, high quality streams in Pennsylvania, if not the country, are in the headwaters of the Delaware River. And the special, special, Delaware. special protection is needed there. Thank you. Congresswoman? Sure. Well, I'll start with a specific answer. Um, I have already said, and I will let's say again, that I support the continued moratorium uh, in the Delaware River Basin. And also, when I came out with, uh, with my position on, uh, on energy and um, on the environment, um, I actually talked very much about local control. Since then, the state courts agreed with me, and that's a good thing, uh, that, we'll, that we will respect local control on drilling. Um, that's important here, it's important uh, in, the, uh, in the Delaware River Basin, but across the state. So here's the, here's the fact, is that we don't trust Tom Corbett on this issue at all. Uh, and we have good reason to. We need a governor who will actually take seriously the issues of uh, safety of clean water and air, using the very best <coughs> science 
uh, to create the very highest standards, and yes, then enforce them. Uh, that's what we can do, it's what we should do. Uh, we should also make sure that this is not the answer uh, to our energy use in the future. We should make those investments in, what, in wind and solar, and I'd add hydro, and I would add energy efficiency. Got some work on this to make sure that we are building more energy efficient buildings and homes and that we are building more sustainable, greener communities. Done that work across my district as a member of Congress, uh, part of the Little Bulls Community Task Force. And I know we can do this. We can protect the environment um, and we must. It is a part of our future and we should certainly uh, make sure that we tax those dollars and use those dollars to protect our environment and to grow this economy. And as governor, I will. Thank you. I, I'm not for drilling in state parks or public lands. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, I think anyone that pollutes our water should be shut down. It's really that simple. At the same time, I believe there was a court ruling that local communities do have jurisdiction. And, and I think it, it should be up to them. I mean, we have to follow the court ruling. Where that all continues to go, uh, I'm not sure, but um, let's face it, there is enough private land in Pennsylvania uh, where a drilling can occur uh, and it does not have to impact uh, public property. We have 80,000 miles of rivers and streams, I'm sure Kate knows this well, uh, in Pennsylvania. 5,000 of those 80,000 are polluted. And, and much of that pollution is where I'm from, western Pennsylvania, with mine acid drainage, where streams have, in essence, been destroyed. Uh, we cannot permit that to ever happen again. Ever, ever, ever happen again. And, and, and so it is the role of state government, and especially the governor, to make sure that doesn't happen. Thank you. Um, and now Dan is going to ask a question about immigration. Thanks, Holly. 